Colorado potato beetles are famously difficult to manage and over time have adapted to become resistant to many management strategies. Many organic potato farmers rely on a pesticide called Spinosad to control potato beetles, but in 2019, University of Minnesota Extension educators identified populations with resistance to this pesticide. Identifying a need for more information on non-chemical management strategies, they worked with three farms to trial five management strategies, testing efficacy, time and money spent implementing them, and getting farmer feedback about how to make these methods more practical. These strategies included digging a trench around the field, row cover, trap crops, straw mulch, and flaming. All of these strategies have been cited as potentially effective, but we wanted to learn more about how practical they would be to use in the field. In this video, we'll highlight each strategy and what we learned through our two-year trial. The first strategy was to dig trenches. This strategy involves digging a trench around your potato field and lining it with plastic. It works because Colorado potato beetles overwinter in the soil in the location they were last grown. Many years, Minnesota winters are so cold that beetles have to deplete their stored fats and calories to survive, and so when spring comes, they are not able to fly. Instead, they need to crawl towards potato fields. By digging a trench, we hoped we could catch some of the beetles and prevent them from entering the field. We tried digging trenches in two ways. At Cloverby Farm, the farmers made a trench using discs on a tractor and then lined it with black plastic mulch. We stapled the edges with landscape staples as well as the bottom of the trench, leaving holes for water to drain. At Shepherd Moon Farm, we dug a trench by hand using shovels and used an old greenhouse plastic to line it. Rather than using staples in the base of the trench, we used clods of dirt to hold it in place. What did the farmers think? Uh, well, we have the tractor to do it, so it was fairly simple. Um, I don't know if it's necessary, especially on the scale that we're at. Um, it's not a whole lot of time spent doing it, but as far as I never saw any beetles stuck in the trench, and I never saw any beetles come up to the plastic mulch and like see it as a barrier. It was less hard than I thought it would be digging the trench, uh, but I wouldn't do it again uh, because it seems like what made a bigger difference just by my by what I noticed was that um, the potatoes that were closer to the potatoes that we had last year were actually trenched and there were more potato beetles in that field so it seemed like uh, distance mattered more than uh, the trench at least that we built. <laughs> we dug the trench by hand and uh, we didn't, the plastic, we maybe had 18 or two feet wide and it seemed like it maybe should have been three feet wide and so that there was, a, it should have been deeper and, and a wider trench. The second strategy was to use trap crops. This strategy involves planting an attractive plant that will lure beetles away from the potatoes. We tried eggplants, which beetles are known to eat. We transplanted eggplants in a row between the potato fields and the area they were planted in the year before so that the beetles would come across tasty green vegetation in the eggplants before they found the potatoes. Since they were transplanted, they were available for eating before the potatoes germinated. The eggplant trap crop. So we didn't do it this year because last year when we had it, um, the rate of growth compared to potatoes is much slower. So I think maybe in a longer growing season, it would be successful or a later planting of potatoes. Um, but definitely, when potatoes, potato beetles discover the potatoes, they'd much rather consume that than the eggplant. The third strategy was to use a flame weeder. This strategy involves flaming young potato plants when they are just a few inches tall. The flame weeder should hurt the beetles and prevent them from laying eggs. As long as the plants are very small, they will be damaged but should theoretically recover. What did the farmers think? Yeah. So I've done it a couple times. I think last year I did it intentionally. Um, I went around with a broom and I have um, a propane flame wand. So I would broom the plants, knock them into our aisle, and then flame weed them that way. Um, as far as that goes, it's satisfying, but not very effective. Um, you're definitely not getting all of the insects and um, it just, you could handpick them much faster, and I think that is much more effective. 
The fourth strategy was row cover. Row cover was simply placed over the potatoes for the first couple of months of development as a physical barrier for the beetles. What did the farmers think of using row covers? The row cover, taking it on and off was a, was a lot of work. Um, and I used the row cover that was, um, you know, three feet or four feet wide. I didn't use a huge swath. And if I did it again, I would use a huge swath, but those are more expensive than the, the narrower ones were what I had um, because the on and off took a while. And I didn't personally notice a difference in the bug count, but I uh, was also not counting the bugs. <laughs> it just felt scary to uncover and then see all the bugs. Whereas um, when, you're, when you are constantly passing the potatoes and they're not covered up, you, you know what's going on under there. So I think just having it hidden was a little, I didn't love that. Um, but the physical barrier makes, I mean, it makes sense. So I, I'm not, I think I would do it again, actually. The row cover, I feel like, is very effective uh, as far as a physical barrier goes. Um, what exactly happens underneath it? Um, sometimes we would see, like, other pests, um, like the potato leaf hopper was under there, but it does definitely keep the potato bugs off. Um, and so it gives those plants, like, a jump start as far as getting um, getting foliage going, but as soon as you remove it, the potato beetles move right in. Um, so you, I think you're just buying yourself time, and then you still have to hand remove the beetles. I would use narrower um, row cover, row cover that's one or two bed widths, not something that's like 15, 20 feet wide, um, because you can do like spot weeding, or um, if a particular variety is maturing and growing faster than another variety, you can uncover that one. Um, yeah, I, I, we'd used a large sheet last year and then we used smaller sheets this year and I would definitely use smaller sheets. The final strategy was to use straw mulch in the potato fields. This strategy requires a bit more understanding of potato beetle life cycles. Colorado potato beetles overwinter as adults they emerge in the spring and lay their eggs on potatoes. The eggs hatch and go through four larval stages and then they drop into the soil where they pupate before they emerge again as adults. They repeat the cycle once and the next generation of adults will live through the winter. Straw mulch is most effective during the pupation stage. It creates a physical barrier between the plants and the soil, making it harder for the pupae to burrow in the soil. More importantly, studies show that it supports more diverse insect communities, and so it is more likely that predator insects will eat the potato beetle pupae. This strategy is not usually promoted on its own, but rather as a supplement to other approaches. Growers are also unlikely to see any results from straw mulch until the second generation of beetles. What do the farmers think of straw mulch? The straw I do anyway if I weren't doing this research that is sort of I do that for weed pressure and also to for water um, so uh, I will do it again would recommend straw <laughs> um, yeah especially this year in the drought it, it helped with the water uh, tremendously um, retained water and uh, it seems like it helps helped with the bugs too so I would recommend straw so the straw mulch in I can't speak to whether or not there are beneficials existing in it. Um, there's definitely a different pressure. And so, like, are there beneficials attacking the larvae or, or um, the different, like, ages of instar? Um, but I, I much prefer mulching, especially in a year like this year with it being as dry as it is. Um, for so many different crops, it retains moisture. So I would continue to use it regardless. There are beetles there, um, but it seems like there aren't as many, like they're not as voracious. So comparing straw mulch to um, just bare soil beds, it's easier to see and catch the bugs on a bare soil, but there are more of them on those plants and there are fewer on the straw mulch beds. So. You know, when you are hand picking, you're losing some to the straw mulch and they are very quick to like, especially the beetles themselves, to go into the mulch and like hide. 
And so you might be spending more time like digging through the straw trying to find them. Um, so that's, that's what I mean, the difference between bare soil versus straw. It's like, well, there may be fewer, but they're harder to get at with straw mulch. Um, but there are many more beetles on uh, bare, bare soil. Based on these demonstration trials, we do not recommend flaming potatoes or using eggplant trap crops as viable potato beetle management strategies. The other three strategies, digging trenches, using row cover, and laying straw mulch are all fairly low input treatments that seem to help suppress potato beetle populations. None of these treatments was sufficient on its own, but the farmers who tried them plan to keep using these strategies in the future. Thank <music> you.